and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lucas podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Welcome back to another episode of My Story, Living with Lupus. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks. Before we get started with today's topic, um, for kids with lupus, damage ahead, particular risks linked to use of corticosteroids. I want to tell you a little bit about the foundation that I formed, the Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendricks Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness, which is a 501c3 organization. It is non-profit. In January 2020, we will start campaigning for preparing children for the upcoming school year, making sure that they have the necessary items to go back to school with. You know, education besides love, guidance, is one of the most important aspects to a child's well-being. A report released by Ed Build, a Washington, D.C.-based group, that monitors school funding issues underscores the magnitude of the crisis that engulfs poor districts. This report estimated that $23 billion less is spent on non-white school districts and that as of 2016, Suburban school districts receive $13,908 for every student, compared to only $11,682 for students in underserved and poverty-stricken districts. It is my plan to provide children that are headed back to school in underserved communities and whose families have been struck by chronic illness such as lupus. We know things can get a little tight um, when you're dealing with a chronic illness. You know, some have to make decisions whether to get medication, buy food, or pay a bill, or even pay the rent. But when it comes to a child, can you imagine not being properly geared up to head back to school like other children? So, January 2020, we will be gearing up for a fundraiser to provide children with backpacks filled with school supplies. I'm speaking with one company regarding um, having winter coats and school shoes and school pants. So, look out for that. The information is posted on My Story Living with Lupus website. And also, if you would like to take a look, you can go to the Charlie 
E. Minnie P. Hendricks Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness dot com. Also, with any donation, be it backpack, coats, or funds, you will receive a sterling silver love, faith, and hope pendant commemorative necklace. So please be out on the lookout for that. Please visit both websites on the foundation website. You will see where the inspiration came from for me to form a 501c3 excuse me, nonprofit. So please take a look and information will be added at the end of well probably in October how if your child is in need of a backpack filled with school supplies or pants or school shoes or a warm coat to wear there will be a registration form um put up that will be listing everything that you would have to do. So please take a look at that. So, okay, are you ready? You know what I'm getting ready to ask you to do. That's right. Grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and if you're listening late at night, you know I appreciate it. So grab your favorite glass of wine, And come on and join me right here on my story, Living with Lupus. All right, are you ready to start talking about for kids with lupus, damage ahead, particular risks, linked with use of corticosteroids. This information was retrieved from MedPage Today, June 4th, 2019. Patients with childhood onset systemic lupus erythematosus, better known as SLE, a cured disease-related damage at rates similar to those with adult-onset SLE, but had greater risk of developing damage specific to steroid use, a longitudinal study found. With a mean follow-up of 6.3 years, the median scores of the brief index of lupus damage were two for both childhood and adult onset SLE, according to Mareva Hessian Beckenstein, MD, and colleagues from the University of California, San Francisco. However, patients with childhood onset disease had twice the unadjusted risk of corticosteroid-related damage compared with those whose disease was diagnosed after age 18. The researchers reported online in seminars in arthritis and rheumatism. Now, as you've heard previously, I had all the signs and symptoms of lupus back in the 1960s at the age of five, but my parents didn't know what was going on. Um, They took me to specialist after specialist after doctor, and they finally took me down to Nashville, Tennessee, to one of the best hospitals there, which was Vanderbilt. And um, at the time, um, they told my mother to um, keep me out of the sun, and maybe that would help. But back then, who really knew what lupus was and what the effect 
that it would have on our bodies. But can you imagine a young child going through what we go through as adults and they're taking corticosteroids? That's something to really think about. This article further states the most frequently reported types of damage in SLE are cataracts, avascular necrosis, diabetes, and osteoporosis. Because of the challenges in the following patients from pediatric to adult health care settings, little is known about the rates and cumulative effects of these events in patients who are diagnosed with SLE as children. Think about that now. Just think. When you're a child and you're going through these symptoms, it could be really horrifying. You can't play like other children. And you're taking corticosteroids as a young child. Um, it's really something to think about. The damage of corticosteroids on the body that's why I was once on corticosteroids uh, when they first diagnosed me back in 2004. I did not like the way it made me feel. And I informed the rheumatologist at that time that I'm not taking that anymore because I didn't like the way that it was making me feel and prolonged use of corticosteroids would be further damaging to me. So just think about children going through this illness. Just think about it. Entrepreneur and creator of Right Side of Death. And I am my sister's keeper, Sheila Smith, motivational and empowerment speaker, is available for your next empowerment event and conference. You can book her for your next event at rightsideof50 at gmail.com. That's R-I-G-H-T-S-I-D-E-O-F. Five zero at gmail dot com or call four seven zero three three zero one four two six. Each one encourage one. All aboard! First time. Presented by Parisian Park Dreams and these Cruise with a twist, right side of 50, hosting a session, stepping into my newness, door prizes, raffles, and fun in the sun, April the 2nd through April 6th. Jacksonville Cruise Port, Jacksonville, Florida. Deposit $150 due July 10th, 2019. Ports of Call, Freeport and Nassau. $579 Ocean View per person. $554 Interior per person. Seven seven zero nine eight two nine three nine nine, and as for due parts, the incidence of the four types of cortical steroid related damage in the overall cohort was forty two percent for cataracts. 
We're talking about children now. 18% for fractures related to osteoporosis, 13% for diabetes, and 8.5% for avascular necrosis. And a model that adjusted for demographic and SLE-related factors, including cyclophosphamide use, patients with childhood onset disease had greater risk of steroid-associated damage with an odds ratio of 1.7. Now, while both childhood onset and adult onset patients accumulate damage at similar rates over time. Those with earlier onset are ultimately likely to develop more damage living longer with the disease and potentially having more extensive exposures to corticosteroids. The researchers noted more aggressive use of steroid sparing management strategies during childhood may be important to prevent steroid related damage in adult, the team concluded. A limitation of the study, Hessian Beckenstein stated, was the self report of outcomes. Now, 113. Of these had childhood onset disease and the remainder were the adult onset comparators. Demographic variables included sex, race, age, ethnicity, and disease duration at baseline. Adjustments also were made for SLE related variables including ever exposure to corticosteroids and use of cyclophosphamide, which was considered a proxy for severity of disease. Age at diagnosis was 14 in the childhood onset group compared with 36 in the adult group and ages at the time of the build score assessment were 32 and 50 years respectfully. Patients in the childhood onset group were more likely to ever have required dialysis, 19% versus 8%, to have had renal transplant, 17% versus 5%, or to have a history of lupus nephritis, 59% versus 25%. They also were more likely to have been exposed to cyclophosphamide, 25% versus 16%. Now, almost all patients in both groups has, well, had used corticosteroids. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at My Story Living with Lupus at gmail.com also visit us on our instagram page and also our website my story living with lupus he is the author of positive energy 24 7 and his latest book it was Destin, urban legend. He's Detroit's own author, Henry Long, to 
purchase an autographed copy of his book and to purchase his ebook, go to writepath247.com. That's W R I T E P A T H 247.com. You can also follow him on Instagram at writepath247. Although disease onset before age 18 was not an independent predictor of damage, disease duration was, with baseline build scores being 1.7 for those with baseline disease duration of less than 10 years, 1.9 for those with 10 to 20 years duration, and 3 for those with disease duration exceeding 20 years. At last follow-up, build scores were 4.1 for those with more than 20 years of disease compared with 2.7 for those with less than 10 years. As with overall damage scores, the proportion of patients who experience a clinically meaningful increase in build defined as two or more points did not differ between the childhood and adult onset groups. While these rates were similar, the observation that approximately half of the patients had a clinically meaningful increase in build duration six years of follow-up. Get your kids checked. When they, when well, let me put it this way. When you take them to the doctor, get them checked every year for this disease. Draw the blood. You know, you never know when it will strike your child. So get your kids checked. I hope you found this segment informative. Now, don't forget when you take your child to his or her next yearly physical, that you ask the doctor to draw blood and just check for autoimmune disease. You never know when something will happen. Um, my daughter, she'll go to the doctor for her yearly physical and she always tell them, I need blood drawn to check for an autoimmune disease because my mother has lupus. Don't forget to go and check out My Story Living with Lupus website and check out the Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendrix Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness. We will be doing great things like no other nonprofit is doing. I don't want to say too much. And if you're interested in the back to school endeavors that we are campaigning for to make sure that children go back to school properly prepared to learn. Be on the lookout. Keep an eye on both websites for that information. And if you're in need of backpacks filled with school supplies, keep a lookout. But before I go, I want to leave you with something about change. You know, change is a challenge. Change is a fear. Change is the change of mind. 
change is a change of attitude. Change is a change of way of life. Change is the change of recognized. Change is the change of mysterious. Change is the change to solitude. Change is the change to perfection. Change is the change to unknown ethics. Change is the change to supremacy. Change is the change to divinity. A change to know the real self. I'm in the business of being that change. To change how we are treated. To change how we are overlooked. To change how this illness is misunderstood. I'm Susan Hendricks for my story Living with Lupus. Have a blessed and positive weekend and won't you be that change the views and opinions expressed on my story living with lupus podcast represents each person's individual experience by listening to this podcast or reading our blog you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others as always consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having my story living with lucas podcast is officially trademarked all rights reserved the podcast you just heard was made using anchor ever thought about making your own podcast anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started it's a one-stop shop for recording hosting and distributing podcasts best of all it's a hundred percent free Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.